In previous videos, we have done various watercolor resists. We did wax resist, alcohol resist, and masking fluid resist. We're going to do some oil resist later on, but today we're going to do a glue resist. So you're going to need some watercolor paper, your watercolors, and some glue, and of course a brush. So any old glue will do. School glue, white glue. I've just got the clear glue. And we're going to do something similar to what I did in one of our Art Through the Ages lessons in our Eastern civilizations. We did some batik prints on cloth, but this can be done on watercolor paper. And we're just going to do the same thing with glue. And I'm going to do a tie dye effect. So you can do circles I'm trying to make a swirl. <laughs> you definitely want the glue to come out a little better than this. And you probably can't see it. All right, so now I'm squeezing super hard. And I'm gonna come back in and just add some more fun swirls. This does not have to be perfect. So hopefully you can see my glue. I'm gonna hold it up because look at how some of them just beat it up. We've got some that are long and some that are kind of have a dotted effect. And that's really cool. Wasn't planning that, but I love it already. What I'm gonna do is set this aside and we want it to dry and we'll be back to add our paints to it as soon as it's completely dry. Okay, our glue has dried. It took a long time. It's a little hot and humid here, but hopefully you can see my clear glue, the light reflecting it, and I just did some random swirls. I was thinking tie-dye. And so I'm gonna keep that theme going. So what I'm gonna do is I have already sprayed my watercolor tray down. And I want to just start taking random colors. I want actually more pigment and less water. Although I will be cleaning my brush in between so I just dipped my brush in the yellow, even though it came out green because I didn't clean my brush well. So I want this effect, but I actually do want some yellow. So let me get my brush cleaned a bit better. And I will get a lot more pigment loaded onto my brush. There's still blue in it. So we're just going to go with it. But I want it in various places and I want to work quickly because I'm also going to pick up my pink and kind of mix it in and it's going to become an orange. Make sure I have just some of the pink. And be careful that We've talked about this in previous videos that you don't let your where the yellow and blue turn to green you don't really want it interacting with the pink and then the orange you don't want interacting when we come in with our blue and add some purple because they will make these lovely shades of brown or just muddy colors. I'm going to come back in here and start filling in with the blue. And I'm going in a circle. So some of the areas you see the blue, some you see where I've 
used the yellow and it's mixed and made the green. And then we have some of the orange that has mixed from our pink and yellow. So even though you see all these extra colors, I've only used three. But I really love this. So I want a little bit more of the pink shade here. And I'm going to come back in and add more of this blue. We want a little bit of purple. And then we still want to see some of the blue. So you can actually create any type of pattern with your glue that you want. You don't have to do a tie-dye effect, but you can see how fun this looks. And in the next video, we're going to do the same effect, but on a different background. So we've been using watercolor paper all this time, but we're going to switch over. Let me pull you out so you can see the edges a little more. Maybe not that far out, there we go. And I want you to see the difference in using different backgrounds. So now I've got a lot of the blue, and I just want to add a little bit more of my yellow in here. which is obviously turning green. But I love you making sure that all of these colors are still wet. And I love watching them interact with each other and just changing. So this is going to dry. It will be a lot lighter. So you could do just let it dry like that and leave it. Or if you want to make sure that some of your colors stay a little more vibrant, then you can just come right back over and add in more pigment. So started out with the blue and I added in the yellow I'm doing the same thing, just making sure I have more yellow and I cleaned my brush better. I like the vibrant colors, I'm not gonna lie. Soft pastel colors are not my jam. And that is one reason I choose to use the tube paints. Uh, for my watercolors, if you have the semi-moist, they work well, but a lot of times the cake ones are a lot lighter than I like, so I prefer these vibrant tubes. All right, I like that, and we're gonna let that dry, and I mean, this is actually fun enough to frame. I'm probably not going to use this one as a background. Um, like I have encouraged you in previous videos, save all of your practice watercolor pages because we will reuse some of them. But the ones that have the resist, and this actually adds a lot of texture, I may want to keep it and just let it be its own piece of art. So if you are enjoying these lessons, make sure you Give us a like and subscribe for more because we're going to be coming out with more lessons showing you how to use a lot more mediums.